Okay, so someone is from Kolkata, someone is from Chennai, someone is from Jammu. Great. Uh, I love the extent of this. Okay, someone is from Bangalore. Okay. Uh, guys, your organizations also can help us. So if you have any college names or any organizations that you actually work for, that will really help us because we might have alumni from your organizations and therefore you guys can have a network also. Uh, so yeah, your organizations also really help. Okay, there are other people joining. So one more minute, guys. From 1.05, we will start. Okay. To the people who are joining in, you can just uh, drop in. Where are you from? Which organization do you belong to? in the Q&A section. That will really help us out. We want to see our extent also. So that will really help us. OK. So if you have any friends, you can send them the link and we can start uh, right now. So first of all, welcome to everybody. Right, This is Ace My Preps um, career counseling session. So anybody who is aspiring to study abroad, needs any uh, needs counseling for any stage right uh, if you are confused about your career options if you are confused about your universities how does the application work everything will be catered to the, uh, today right so it will be better if you ask everyone to join as soon as possible because you know we'll go at a very fast pace we have to cover a lot of things uh, thus okay take it i can see a lot of people joining and i think they are settled in take it great let's start so first of all, introducing us. So we started this company around seven to eight years ago. Okay. Uh, in my team, there are many people who have had top admits from all over the world and they've gone there, they've come back. And then we have started this organization. The only aim of this organization was to service you guys, the people who deserve the best schools abroad. Right. And, uh, when we were, we were doing this for ourselves, there were many challenges that we actually faced. And we didn't want anyone else to face those challenges. Thus, the mission of Face My Prep was to send people to the deserved university. And most of you guys deserve the top universities. You just don't know it yet. Right. So on that note, let's go forward. So these are our two co-founders. One of them is with us live, right? She's Pragya Ma'am and Prithvi sir. So these guys started this mission and then we we all you know joined in. And now we have sent over 10,000 students study abroad, and all of them, mind you are from tier one and tier two universities, which I'm sure your aim is as well. Right. So introducing myself as well. So I have been in this industry for many years. I uh, did this process for myself when I was applying for my MIM, right? Pagamam really helped me a lot through that. And since then, I have joined their organization as well. And uh, even I have helped so many students abroad and I have a network. If not anything, my network worth is a lot. I'm one of my one of our students right now has joined in. And uh, he is Bharat. He is our most recent LSE admit, London School of Economics admit. So, introducing Bharat, Bharat, how do you feel about the LSE admit? And uh, first of all, hearty congratulations for that. I remember the first year that you walked in with your mother, I guess, right? So, you were pretty nervous that day. If any anything is possible, not possible, and your mother was very concerned. But how do you feel today? How is your mother feeling? <laughs> well, thank you so much. Um... So I do remember that first day, actually, I was incredibly nervous. Um, we're all really, really happy. We're really excited uh, because when we had started to apply to these universities, we'd always considered LSE to be a dream like university for me uh, personally. And so to get that acceptance letter was just really just a great moment. And um, yeah, so like, my mother is obviously she's like really 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 happy because i remember that first day when she interacted with you she had even by i mean like mentioned lsc by name so she was always enamored by the idea of me going to lsc so the fact that now i actually have an admit has made her really happy so yeah we're all really excited right now um a little focused on the process going forward um but yeah still very excited yeah, you got another offer from SOS as well, right? So that's also a top school. So you got two offers, SOS yeah. and LSE. And mind you guys, this is the stage that we want you guys to be in, to be confused between two top admits, where to go. And I think for the past week, Bharat was also very confused whether he wants to go for LSE or SOS, right? Because SOS has a very, very small class size. To so get in is super niche. 
and we got through there as well right so uh pragya ma'am uh welcome to the session first of all right and do you want to address the entire you know webinar something or say something about bharat right now yeah thank you nikhil so first of all welcome heartiest welcome to everybody who's here you've taken that one step to get closer to your dream destination and that's why you're here you try to get out the maximum value on the session uh bharat nice meeting you and congratulations first of all and i was really really proud happy you know to see you get an admit so quickly from lsc right and i think there are many more applications that are still uh with the universities and i hope that you get many more offers to come and of course the process that you're talking about don't worry we stay focused and uh, eventually the visa and everything will be taken care of very very nice but i think uh, to your mom as well heartiest congratulations i think it's a very very proud moment for them as well okay thank you so much uh, <laughs> so everybody joining in so we can start with the counseling right now okay so this was our introduction this was bharat's introduction and this entire counseling session will make uh, give you all the clarity that you need to start your study abroad process what do we need uh, how can you go about if you want to fly off in september 23 there is still a good chance of you getting into top universities right so let's get on with it so first of all the yes in the qna section you guys can mention what is your dream university right so which university do you guys are you guys targeting anything can take uh, you can take shot and anything just like bharat said on the first day his mother was very excited for lsc and uh, you know on that day um, even i had to tell her that lsc would be a dream admit but i'm glad that four months later we can bring the lsc offer letter to her home right but uh, that's how it begins right so the first thing is to you know make a target university so if you guys have any target universities can be any big name totally um, don't worry about your profile that's our job but first type in your dream university so i can see nikunj has in pennsylvania state university okay nikunj there are two kinds of universities there there is university of penn and there is penn state so which one do you mean right so there is a little bit of difference not a huge difference but yes there is a little bit of difference one's in one is an ivy league one is not so definitely make sure which university are you targeting ohio state michigan state okay um boston university great imperial uh people who have written ohio or michigan i would definitely like to know your profile more right because i think you can aim higher because most of the students in india don't know exactly what their potential is and this is not your fault guys this is actually uh the fault of people who just promote those smaller universities right so first of all aim as high as possible Vanderbilt. Okay, good name, good name, because it's a hidden gem. Vanderbilt is a hidden gem for us, so I can totally understand. Hey, okay, you, I can hear a lot of names, so you guys can keep posting it. We'll give you specific information about those universities also later. Okay. So first thing that we do at Ace My Prep, let's start with the major core of thing. The first thing that you have to do, in fact, even prior to the uh, university selection, what you have to do is to map your course with your ROI factor. right not every course is that benefitable in every country so first of all so you have to understand whether which the course that you are actually applying for has the demand in that market or not right what are the average salaries that you will be getting how will your career trajectory go right what trajectory will your career take um, rather and will it really be beneficial in 10 years right there are many things that will go redundant in the next 10 years so you have to make sure that whatever course you are taking up is you know sustainable in nature right in the next 10 years also it has to provide the same income that it is doing today or in fact grow okay so how do we do that at ace my prep it's actually a five step shortlisting process right so the first thing that we do here is show you all the courses so I'm, i know the picture is a little blurry because there are so many course options right so we had to fit in all in one picture so this is one of my students who was going towards finance and she needed to know all of these courses names what are the subjects that she has to study what are the job profiles she will get what are the kind of companies that will come to hire her and what are the average salaries right why is it so important because in finance just for example i would love to know if there are any courses that you want to know about like in finance there are multiple courses that you can go for you can go for investment management you can go for accounting you can uh, combine it with a cfa or cpa right there's masters in management with a finance or financial you know specialization right international business management financial management financial engineering so the list is huge 
and i can't even tell you there are so many good universities that have a quantitative finance course such as georgia state university as a quantitative finance so until unless you are sure that the course that you are going for is sustainable or not what will be the roi is it relevant to today's world and will be relevant to the next 10 years also you can't decide on a course you can't put 40 lakhs 50 lakhs on that course right so the first step in amp is actually discuss which course will give you what right so anybody who is from the btech background for you guys this chart is also very important this is shared custom in a custom way with every student that enrolls with us okay so you don't have to worry once you get on board with us you will get your custom made also so this is one of my students who is actually sitting in stanford and this was his course option job profile list right so he was confused between after doing a btech cs he was confused should i go for a specialization should i continue in a general cs right should i switch towards business analytics also so here you see you can get three primary details first is the curriculum that you have to study the sample link okay then the job profiles what are the job profiles in that particular career role and what are the average salaries corresponding salaries of those job profiles so that is the beauty of this particular shortlist strategy right so first you get to know every course trust me guys uh, there are many students who know who were very adamant towards their course and once they landed in uk us germany they realized that there was a better course and they were more suited to that course and that class environment right that's not something that i would want for any of our students because after investing 40 lakhs which is like the biggest investment that a middle class indian makes right you don't want any regrets on your table wow. so this method makes make sure that you have every course in front of you and how to go about it what will be the career trajectory right this is again one of our students who is sitting with a lancaster admit right now she was very confused between public administration public policy hr brand management right so pragya ma'am had counseled her um, herself so i think pragya ma'am you can pitch in here how, what was her mental state and how did we guide her towards the best course right so i think you will be able to explain better here all right so i think uh, let's understand quickly the structure of the sheet and you've explained a bit right i think whenever you were deciding which course you have to select a lot of things come into the consideration i think for me the first and foremost thing is that you should like that domain right uh it doesn't matter if you know economics is the best field but if you don't like it you don't have that interest you never be able to do anything in that field right and uh, realize this guys that once you're there you're on your own and academics is a big part you uh, most of the universities put a requirement of 2.5 gpa out of four you know you have to graduate with that to you know even get that degree right so you can't pick up anything that you don't like or is very advanced from your knowledge level right in this sheet firstly you can see that uh you know we talk about what kind of subjects there are there right what what will you exactly study right what kind of job profiles because if i'm an extrovert i want to get into a role where i get to talk right i get to manage people maybe or if i'm an introvert i i would rather you know put on my headphones and sit in one corner right so understanding the job profiles is important this way right uh then of course you know we are all seeking a very good roi right i think um, bharat you as well going about lsc and making that decision is you know just tilting more towards lsc i think roi is a very very prime factor there right so i think it's very important to understand what kind of salaries can you guys expect right and yes we put down some links that is a sample link to understand the curriculum itself right and eventually when a student comes with a mindset that i don't know anything i'm not sure what you know where to tilt and that happens a lot of uh, students who come from commerce background right so that is very common there because it is a very versatile domain right and you can practically get into anything after commerce right you've done mathematics you've dealt with uh, you know finance you you've dealt with accounts right for this student particularly she was very creative and that's why you can see courses like brand management which are not just because of the curriculum but also her instinct to be in a creative kind of a job role right um besides brand management is evolving day by day it's a very new course right and in the next 5 years of expected to even go better and that's why you see this right um you can see hr which is a very niche course but has a very good roi so she also wanted me to put something that has you know very very good high scale um she might not be an expert at it right so that is just there to make her aware right um again being a creative person being very outspoken she wanted to put courses like public administration or you know international relations right but once we went through these curriculums i think we chucked out hr in the next 10 minutes of our discussion right she was not at all right um some of the course her parents wanted to pursue right again because of high salary and you see one yes that is here again because of 
very good salary range very clear right eventually what matters is that wherever you're going right whichever country it it should have to ha- have a space for that side of a role right second thing is that whatever you want to study it should have a glimpse of your personality in that very course right and i think for her as well these were all the pointers eventually we also do this step for our students called a psychometric assessment because our students don't even understand themselves this psychometric assessment helps us to understand your personalities by you know kind of putting them down into 16 personality types right so once you join us and you are on to the step i would suggest that let's do a psychometric test to understand your personality then let's find courses that are very high on the salary bar but also something that you like according to your personality and of course it's it's an open world right when you're discussing about the courses it's it's not just one discussion it goes on generally to one two calls or sessions because they want to you know kind of evolve everything right so i think that is how it went with the her as well like okay great great so i think bharat i remember the first conversation you were also a little bit confused which course to go for right because you had journalism on your plate right you could go for communications you could go for international relations right so can you just brief us how did you come to the communications management you know that was your final pick so how did you choose that and how did we help us on that so um like both of you mentioned it's really important to know exactly what stream like your sort of interested in because i had a very general idea that okay i want to enter journalism and i want to enter this media industry I'm not exactly sure what i want to do there like there wasn't a clear plan as such because it's so vast i mean like if you're talking about the media industry you could go for broadcast me- uh, like news type of journalism or you could go into writing which is a different field or a magazine sort of journalism so there are different like areas that you can target once you enter that stream i personally am much more like interested on like it media communication and it's like relationship with development so i'm looking more towards like uh, working for potentially the un or its development programs or development agencies or being a communication analyst there so that was that's a conclusion that i've come to only after like repeated counseling sessions like with the team which helped me out through the process because at first i was really confused i knew that my interest was in this industry media industry but where exactly do i take myself from there so again like you need to have that sort of guidance really to figure out what you want to do because then you'll also target courses that will help you out with that because within media like uh and communication there are so many courses offered by so many universities they'll always emphasize one thing over another um even within lsp like they have different media and communication masters program like there's one that's related to data and science mm. uh and there's one that's not at all related to development and it's just um like specific right specifically like development oriented so like right. my course i picked out very specifically because, because so it can get really confusing and you need guidance yeah. for the best course so yeah right i think uh, one has got a very very good point which is it what matters uh, you know actually in a very very important format is where exactly you are in terms of the career if you are a fresher the course choices should be different right um a lot of computer science students they are aspiring to get into ai data science right uh, but if i have just graduated right i should rather seek maybe a masters in computer science and maybe take up some electives of that course right not just completely go into data science right i can take up let's say masters in computer science with a specialization of data science if i am a little bit more known to that field right and uh, somebody who has worked for a few years in ai would you know i would prefer that person to actually pick up the direct course as a masters in you know ai or data science so mm-hmm. i think that's a very valid point on that yeah. okay great Thanks. so i think yeah bharat uh, i remember how confused you were but uh, i love the way you worked it out right you talked to us you you were uh, very consistent with the counseling and that's how it works right so when you talk with four people who have the knowledge of this particular domain then it gets clear little by little right so and now you have an lsc admit so i think that's the testament of the process that we did we believe in the process and it has paid out right So yeah, guys. So this is. Uh, I had asked some of you guys any courses that you want clarity on. So I think Preeti has mentioned UI UX, right? So great. Uh, we have other UI UX uh, people also with us, Preeti. We love you. 
uh, if you can you know join us uh, on a one on one session we'll give you some university names also we'll guide you how to make a profile also on a ui ux space right uh, the major of the universities are spread around us and uk so you can definitely chip in for a personal session and there are some people asking for msba business analytics great so you guys can definitely book a one on one session which is absolutely free with us right so you will get all of your answers there as well okay now moving forward this is the first step guys this is just the first step where you decide on which course and career uh, trajectory to pick on and moving forward the most important thing right now that we have to address is actually the deadlines right so these are some big universities that have deadlines within january february or march right so first of all if you have to make a plan for september 23 or even january 24 right you have to start as soon as possible and this counseling session can be just the kick starter of your entire campaign right the entire process itself takes 4 5 months easily right so if you start the counseling then you have we have to um decide on which universities to apply the actually first the career guidance then the universities then the applications so there are a lot of pendencies that is involved so this is just a reminder to you guys that the deadlines are very near actually i have uh, deliberately mentioned some of the deadlines that are passed like nyu stern it passed on in january january 15th but there are rolling admissions also in every university so right so it's not the end of the day it's just that we have cleared round 1 round 2 and now there are some rolling admissions that you can still be a part of in september 23 or january 24 and stay tuned till the end of this webinar because you will receive an entire list of the universities that still have their deadlines open you can definitely put in your application if you have your passport if you have your mark sheets you just need some vague powerful essays a little bit of counseling and we can definitely drop an application for september 23 as well okay moving forward what okay just give me a second i think there is a glitch one second okay yeah so is is gr your gmat delaying your plan so there are a lot of people who actually have asked this to us that is gr your gmat uh, necessary for to go in september 23 it's not to be very honest yes there will be some schools that have a mandatory gr gmat requirement but there are only some most of the tier 1 universities have waived off gre gmat and most of our big applications or big admits that have come are with a gre gmat request right so first of all if gre gmat is delaying your plan it's time to buckle up and apply for gre waivers right so how does this waiver system work so basically there are multiple things that you have to cater into when you are applying for a gre waiver first is your academic readiness So if you have had a good GPA above three or above seven point five in Indian terms, then you are very much eligible for a GMAT GRE waiver. Some of you, if you guys have four or five years of experience or more than that, you have led a team in one of your professional, you know, experiences. That will really help again for a GRE GMAT waiver. So what exactly are they looking for in a GRE GMAT waiver? Is are you are you a person who is analytical in their approach? That's it. right gre and gmat is an analytical exam obviously it consists of quant verbal integrated reasoning and everything but at the end of the day they are judging your analytical capabilities so if you have had roles internships or full time job roles right in the in an analytical domain where you have led a team or you belong from an analytical field you are more likely to get a gre gmat waiver it just depends how you are going to apply for it you can write an essay for it you can fill out a form right and this essay or the form has to be deadly right when i say deadly it has to be very crisp on point they are not looking for an sop of 500 700 words it has to be something very crisp around 250 words that highlights your quant abilities and then the verbal abilities as well right so yeah so that's why most of our people have got a gmat or gre waivers because the essays were very crisp right one of the examples will be here right so this is ruksha she got a full time gmat gre waiver for fall 23 right her waiver was approved that's why i've attached the waiver um, you know request and the you know acceptance so that you guys get to know that even like a uh, university like boston is ready to give a uh, gmat gre waiver a uh, university like buffalo this is from buffalo so university of buffalo is ready to hand out a gm gmat gre waiver even columbia is giving out GM, gmat gre waivers right warwick is another big name in uk imperial someone had written imperial so yes imperial also provides gmat gre waivers but on a very very high conditional value right so you have to be very very crisp and 
onto it, right? So, Pragya ma'am, would you want to add anything to the GMAT GRE waiver request? Because I think we have had a very good success rate. I think around 80-85% of the people that have applied for a GMAT GRE waiver through us has gotten. So, any secrets that you want to share? I think, uh, firstly, students are very conservative when it comes to talking to universities and trying out. I personally have to reach out as much, right? It is okay to communicate with the university as many number of times. Feel free to put down your requests or questions to them. That is the first step. The second is that, as Nikhil mentioned, GRE or GMAT is just a sign of your quantitative ability. Either I might say that I have covered up subjects in my undergraduate or if I've done a postgrad, right, which are very quantitative, right? So something that you know dealt with numbers or something that dealt uh, with statistics, right? Something quantitative, right? And I would particularly want to mention the grades that I've got in these subjects, right? And if you know, I would be lucky if I had very good grades on these subjects, right? Second thing would be if you have, uh, you know, um, good experience, right? Let's say three to five years of experience, right? And in a domain that, again, was a little bit more quantitative, you should put down that request. And thirdly, a lot of students, in fact, uh, since I personally cater to a lot of students coming from the commerce background, um, I think for these students, they always do a CA. Most of them are pursuing a CA in, you know, in middle of the process, right? That's a very advantageous uh, position to be in because you are covering very advanced subjects as compared to anybody else in the world, right? So you should put down the request um, on the grounds of having a professional qualification, in spite of the fact you might be still pursuing it. Anybody who has done a CA certification, even a foundation course, that also helps, right? All of these professional courses also really help. There was one of our students who had 48 percent, but with a CFA and a CA, he got a GMAT GRE waiver, and then he went on to get a very good opportunity at Rotterdam Erasmus, right? Netherlands number one MBA. He got an offer, plus he got a job letter with his offer letter, right? So there are multiple things that can happen. It's just about trying it out in a particular manner they like things just in a professional manner and that's why we are here we we are here to help you guys okay so that's it about the gmat or gre waiver if you don't have a gmat gre it doesn't matter you can still get into the top 10 top 15 of any country right it just depends who is counseling you how are you approaching the entire application okay now moving forward this is a huge question in front of people right now which test to take english language ielts to fl det or an MOI, right? So the MOI is a secret that many people want to use. They want to avoid giving an IELTS or a TOEFL. So first of all, I'll start with DET. DET is redundant now, guys. I would not uh, suggest you DET until unless there is an application deadline. Within two days, DET will not be a profitable thing because 70% of the uh, universities have removed DET from their application process. There are There is still time. If you have given a DET and you want to apply in September 23, do contact us. We'll give you the list of universities that are still accepting DET and you can get through for September 23. But anyone who is planning for a very good university, DET should not be one of the options that you guys consider. It was a good thing while uh, during COVID. But now it's not, right? So it's not a sustainable thing. IELTS and TOEFL, these two exams are permanent, right? So anytime you attempt an IELTS or TOEFL, it is valid throughout the world. Many students come up to me that uh, TOEFL is accepted in US, IELTS in UK. That's not the case at all. IELTS, IELTS is accepted universally. There are certain universities that demand a TOEFL score, such as Stanford. Stanford has a very good uh, affiliation with TOEFL, so it demands a TOEFL score out of you. But apart from such one or two exceptions, IELTS is accepted anywhere. If you compare uh, with the student response that we have got, IELTS is a little easier than TOEFL. TOEFL is a little more strenuous, right? So definitely, if you want a good particular test that is worldwide accepted, IELTS should be your choice, right? Now, coming to MOI, what is a medium of instruction? So if you apply to top universities, this only happens in the top universities, by the way, tier one universities. If you have studied um, in a university where the medium of instruction was English, or you have worked in an international environment where the medium of instruction was in English, then definitely you are eligible for an IELTS waiver or a TOEFL waiver, right? How does this work is, this is what a medium of instruction document looks like. So William Carey University in Shillong has just written that the bachelors of science uh, that the student has covered, right, was in English and the entire degree was covered in English. And on those grounds, please accept him or her into your master's university. Right. So the medium of instruction document is issued by your bachelor's university, right? 
that the entire medium of instruction of the entire uh, course was in english and on those grounds this guy can attend your master's university that's simple it's as simple as that the concept is simple the application method is a little complicated you might have to email the university you might have to email the admissions officer there might be very different things that you have to do but again that's what we are here for so we will make that easy for you right uh, as program man said it never hurts to write an email to the university right so if you just write an email attaching this more or less they will also guide you it's not rocket science that we are doing here it's just pure logic right it's just that it is a very uh, you know time cutting solutions that we give uh, the entire process is done at a very high speed with us right so that's it about the medium of instruction anybody who has doubts regarding any of these topics we are just giving 5 5 minutes to every topic so that we cater to every topic but if you need an in depth analysis or there are some other doubts that you guys want us to cater to please write it in the q and a box or book a free counseling session okay we'll be more than happy to solve all of your doubts moving forward one of the major hurdles for everyone out here it, it was a hurdle for me as well when i was going abroad and i think bharat is going through the same thing the loan process which is still ongoing i can see it right mm -hmm. so the loan is obviously well, I, i like your laugh because it's a little difficult i totally know the loan is obviously a hurdle that everybody wants to cross as soon as possible but there is structure to it right there are two types of loan that you can go for it's a collateral or a non collateral most of our students 80% of our students want a non collateral loan so that there is no burden on their parents or their uh, you know dependents or so okay so if if a collateral loan is in the talks then definitely you should talk to your bank there will be a lot of options in front of you our only advice you should talk to at least five banks before deciding on which collateral loan to take right in the non collateral there are a lot of things that have come up okay there are public sector banks that provide only collateral loan and non collateral loan will be only up to 7.5 lakhs now all of you guys no matter which big universities that you are targeting 7.5 lakhs mein it will really not help okay so what we have to focus is on the non collateral loan from private sector banks non banking financial sectors international loan companies right yeah. these people have that ability to give you a 40 lakh loan 50 lakh loan without any asset, asset evaluation also just on a basis of a co applicant and sometimes even a co applicant is not required because your profile or your particular offer letter is that strong right so we need to focus more on non collateral loans if you guys are open for non collateral loans we can focus more the only difference here is the rate of interest is a little higher in a collateral if it is between 8 to 10 in a non collateral it comes between 9.5 to 11 or 11.5 depending on your credit score right how to go about it first thing that you need for a non collateral loan offer is your offer letter from the university so whatever we are talking about it's actually very deep into the process first we need to apply we need to get an offer letter we need to get scholarships and that makes the application for the loan right now if you guys there are many people who don't want to start the process until unless the loan is cleared right and that's to be on to be honest that's a very very wild a demand i would say because until unless you have an offer letter your loan terms cannot be given to you no interest of rate can be calculated what will be the repayment period will not be calculated so anybody out there who is stopping their process just because of loan just a tip of advice right a little small tip that first get your offer letter first mm -hmm. let's get to know what is your market value in the international market right let's mm -hmm. see if lse wants to accept you let's see if howard is is interested in you if howard is interested in you trust me the banks will run after you right trust me they want to have a, a portfolio where they have you know funded a person who is going to howard so trust me first step is actually getting the offer letter and that is a very i would say very cheap process you don't have to pay the tuition fees for the entire application right you just have to pay the application fees you have to get your documents sorted you need to apply so the first step that we advise every student to do is apply first get an offer letter then we should talk about education loan or so there is a loan department you don't need to worry right there is a loan department that caters to your loan processes there are two types uh, how we handle this first is like bharat also has some contacts in banks right so he is also trying uh, with his contacts in banks obviously we will be always providing support as well with our partnerships with our whatever advices we can give him there are other international organizations like prodigy you must you guys must have heard about prodigy empower right avance these kind of uh, finance systems are also there this is one of uh, one of our students you can see he has got a particular uh, loan right loan sanction letter of 18000 and they then on after after a certain period of time he is entitled to a loan of 50000 around 49000 right and that is totally non collateral he has not uh, you know 
kept anything on mortgage, none of his assets, and this is just based on the offer letter. So just imagine, just think of the business side of it. If they know that you are going to Stanford or you are going to Berkeley or let's come down a little bit, if you're going to Michigan State or Ohio State, they have their entire team that takes out the return of investment, uh, you know, uh, numbers of Michigan State, right? And they see, okay, the average salary is forty forty five thousand dollars $45,000. So maybe this kid will take around five or seven years to repay the loan, right? Or they are playing on that crowds. So if they are ready to take a bet on you, why not? Why are you not ready? That's the only question. Right. So, Bharat, I, I'll just like to loop you in. So what's going on with your loan process? Right. Um, I'm sure that we will obviously help you out and you will get the loan. Right. So what are the hurdles that you are facing in your loan process right now? So um, as of right now, like I have the offer letter from LSP, but now it's just to decide, um, like just going through that whole process can be very confusing again. Because there are a lot of things that you have to keep in mind regarding the interest rate and the right bank for you. So you have to know which bank is like offering, giving you like the safest sort of a deal. Um, mm. So it's just that like figuring out that process is, I mean, it's time taking because um, you also have to simultaneously, once you get an offer letter, do a lot of different things like you have to keep your documents ready you have to get your university to uh, send them across so there's a lot of things going on right now but with regard to the loan uh, that process has to really like it really have to we really have to sort of kick start that process because we also have to figure out what scholarships i can apply to what scholarships i'm eligible for there are a lot of scholarships that are out there that the university specifically also provides and ones that you can apply for just generally also as you know whether the commonwealth scholarship or just depends which ones you're eligible for so we're still figuring it out that process great so that's it right so once you get your offer letter then you have these many options in front of you right that's the main crux once he has an offer letter now his main intention is about getting the process done he has time till september to figure things out obviously there is a visa process also coming his way so the loan takes time so that's why applying early is also a great advantage the early mover advantage is never out of the system right so as bharat you mentioned scholarships program would you like to loop in here and discuss about the three types of scholarship that we actually tell the students about so um, before that, I'll just say one more thing about the loan. I personally, when I was looking to go abroad again, I had the same kind of just to go to very good schools. But when I had a look at the fee, it was unnerving, right? So I think uh, mm. it, I think the biggest problem is that students also don't communicate well with their parents, right? So I think you should talk to your right. parents very early in your process about uh, what is the expectation. You should not, uh, you know, undertone the amount you should always uh, over you know uh, promise or overcome it to them that this is what is going to be my amount right and then let's see how it turns out for them also right um talking about the scholarships i think scholarship again is a black box for majority of the students they feel that you know scholarship is something that only people with 90s and uh, you know probably more than uh, even that you know would deserve but it's not really like that there are multiple kinds of scholarships that you can aim for um, but in fact, for you, I would, you know, again, you know, want you to listen to this and try and get as many scholarships as possible from LSC. Okay, so the first kind of scholarships are actually the merit-based scholarships, which you directly get in your offer letter. These do not require any separate application. So while you're applying in your application form, you put a tick mark that I'm okay. looking to get a, consider, uh, you know, a consideration for a scholarship, right? These are solely given on the basis of your profile, right? Um, again, since they don't require any other application form, it's always a good idea to put a tick mark to it. Nonetheless, you might even feel that you might, you know, feel like a, that you don't deserve one. Uh, the second type of scholarship is actually a need-based scholarship, which has a separate application, right? And these are also called the university by scholarship. So for, for this, you actually need to go to your university page, read about the scholarships. You need to check your eligibility, right? So there are particular scholarships for women, right? There are particular scholarships for entrepreneurs, right? So go through these scholarships, check your eligibility and apply. They might require an essay, an interview for you to, you know, get uh, granted for a scholarship, right? Uh, the third type of scholarships are actually the department scholarships, which are the most difficult to get because mm -hmm. they run solely on your course knowledge. So if I'm applying to renewable energy, I need to show them what work, what credits I hold, particularly in that segment, right? 
uh, these in general they are not very precisely given on the university website where you need to go to your department page instead now or you might also write to your uh, departmental advisor in that very university right it's never again never wrong to write an email so reach out to your department advisors i think uh, bharat i'm going to advise you the same right uh, let's look into the university by scholarships let's go about the department scholarship let's see what we can get again department scholarship like i said they have a separate application if properly given if not then it's always a mail to the university mm. uh, you know advisor and they guide you further that's right great so uh, as ma'am was mentioning i also remember last year two of our female students as as she rightly mentioned they got um an auw scholarship you guys can look it up yourself it's $20000 right just because they were going for entrepreneurial studies and management studies right and specifically of applying for a managerial domain or fine arts domain your extracurriculars can also get scholarship so if you have heard about the ivy leagues they have a very competitive sport league okay so they are very competitive around sports so if you are very good with sports they have, will have sports scholarships for you also if you are very good at dance if you if you are in a university around new york there will be a lot of dance scholarships right so these are small small niche niche details that we bring to your table and we try to bring the best of the knowledge to your table so that you guys get all the financial aid in the world that you deserve right so it's never one scholarship that you apply for it's always three or four or five scholarships out of which you crack two or three and then you can save 20 lakhs 30 lakhs also okay so moving forward just give me a second okay so what will be the timeline okay so in in fall right now if you see the left hand uh, box right so in the fall intake this is how we will be going forward if you guys can join us right in jan we'll be completing your entire shortlisting january february will be completing an entire application now the applications has a lot of documents that we need right so you can also get the document list free from our side you don't have to worry you just have to register for a free uh, counseling session and you will get the document list as well it starts from the basic that's a passport right it goes on to your letter of recommendations your project works any uh, patents that you have to your name we have to submit every document after you submit your applications in february you will get your offers by april okay it takes one and a half or two months for the university to review your application to review all the scholarships that you are eligible for and then you give you the offer letters or a reject letter in two months that means in april you will have the offer letters in your hand in april itself we have to make sure that the entire loan is you know catered to because we don't have that much time um, because we have to apply for the visa within may the slots open in april uh, as well and if you had uh, paid attention last year there was a huge fight for visa slots right there were there were black money involved ki, uh, you know just get me a visa slot there were people that were contacting us they were i don't remember the number of calls but they were like if you pay extra money can we get a visa slot right so that does um involve a lot of things but that's why in april itself we have to cater to the entire loan process so that in may june july you can get a visa slot a proper visa slot and your visa can be done also just in case you have to be prepared for a second visa round right so because the, the visa acceptances are on a uh, on a lower side so you will have to keep some buffer time if you get a visa reject once you have to have one month again right to apply for the visa again also although yes we will uh, if you get into a top university the visa digestion rate is very low but just for a buffer time right so let's be practical about it now if you're targeting the spring intake it will be a little different than that here one step is added and that's profile enhancement right what do we mean by profile enhancement is we have counselors from you know uh, that have studied all around the world we have a combined experience of more than 60 70 years so what exactly do we do is we enhance your profile we suggest you some internships right we suggest you which job you should take what kind of courses you should take you can use our contacts as well and that that there is where we enhance your profile to the next level right now you might be at a with a 7.5 cgpa and just worked one internship but within three months we will have five courses with you some projects in that domain and how to present that in your application is what we are brilliant at right so this profile enhancement takes two or three months and then we apply in may and the rest of the things again follow at the same level right so the same procedure same pace but the profile enhancement is very important if you go for a spring intake so if you give us time to work on your profile we'll enhance your profile to that level just an example of that there was one student of ours who had studied in du delhi university but the open learning right open learning delhi university with a 7.5 cgpa 
no one in india was offering him a job no one none of the other counselors were taking up his case because it was a distance learning course which is not accepted in us or canada first of all that's not true distance learning is accepted in us or canada you just need to know how to present it right and after the profile announcement he had some international internships some lors and right now he's sitting at university of rochester ms in finance you mind you the cgpa was just 7.5 right rochester ms finance comes in the top 10 top 15 universities for ms finance in us and the average salary is there is around 102000 dollars right so that's how life can be completely changed with 3 months of complete dedication in the profile analysis just giving a brief right so if you guys are targeting fall this is the month that you have to start right at least take a shot at least let's see where do you deserve to go which university is interested to take you in right worst case scenario if if it uh, in may or june you feel like okay uh, i can't go this september you can defer your intake to january or so but at least you will get to know certainly that what is your market value which universities are interested in your profile okay so great and uh, moving forward let's come to bharat completely right so i think bharat this was your entire uh um, you know profile right so you had done a ba then an ma and there was a gap year right and the ielts score was brilliant but this was the just of your profile right uh do you want to say anything how you felt about your profile back then because i i know that you were the university topper right but your cgpa was a 7 7.25 so i think one of the doubts that you had was the, because the cgpa is seeming low will the top universities recognize my potential or not so any difference of what you felt for your profile back then and right now so um again like i was completely unaware of the ways in which university assesses your accomplishments your merit and stuff like that but um i feel like so even back then uh i had all of these like so like academically i had a strong background but i felt like how do you then convey that to the admissions team that was a big concern for me and uh, i realized that universities are sort of because even though my cgpa like is 7.25 like that's just how they score people in english so i did not know how is it that the university is going to understand all of this right um i felt right. that through the process of course like as i got involved with uh, you people like it became clearer that they do that there are certain ways in which you can highlight that you have your personal statements and in general they also thoroughly go through all of your documents and go through the degree itself but with my profile i think the biggest con- cause of concern for me was the gap year because um, mm-hmm. after i had completed my ma uh, i sort of had this phase where i was personally just in general i went through sort of a burnout and uh, i was more interested in doing the things i wanted to do which wasn't really yeah. you know like being professionally involved i did some things that i really liked doing i took that year out to just sort of recuperate and do things on my own but uh, during that time uh, at the end of that gap year i realized that um, it's like that's the big fear now that how do i like how do i justify this to a university to a top school so i mean yeah. I think that that's what I think that the institute was like overall, as I said, really helpful in like just navigating through that. Because in your application, as long as like you're able to indicate potential and indicate like desire that you want to pursue this really well, um, you'll you'll get a top university. But just you need that sort of guidance and that support, which I feel I was lacking. uh because everyone in society can tend to like you know scare you a lot ki tumne gap year le liya hai or just in general so you just need to have that support and like so i think that was very was very helpful exactly so as bharat rightly mentioned that you know the university is catered to the comprehensive application so first of all the many students have this uh, complaint uh, that uh, you know i just have a 7 cgpa but i was a topper how will i present this so lsc and london business school and imperial they guys know right do what happens in india they have research communities that you know take care of every education system of the world okay so first of all trust them that they know about what's going on in your university like he belong from delhi university bharat so that delhi university is a very well renowned university all over the world so they know how the correction measures are here right obviously you need to point it out as well okay but 
those guys sitting in the top universities they look for potential everywhere so they know about all of these things also one, one other thing that you can do if you are applying to us or canada is go for a wes evaluation right there is a particular oh. organization that full times does this converts an indian cgpa to a us or canadian cgpa so there are multiple tools out there that are that is ready that are ready to you know get you the top admit it's just about you acknowledging them you trusting them right and then believing in yourself because as bharat rightly mentioned the society is very evil here right so whenever you talk about lbs or lsc there'll always be people who will frown upon you but they have not gone through the process right we have sent 10000 people abroad we have got them in these top admits so we know the process we just need a person who is committed to the process that's it right a person that believes in their profile believes in us and within 4 5 months magic can happen right because if you have the potential if you can showcase that through your internships through your through your practical work then definitely these universities also have will have interest in you they will like to nurture you okay moving forward this was his uh, bharat's entire application guys right so this was his profile and this is his university shortlist with a 7.25 gpa i think someone had wrote imperial so imperial was there leeds was there sos which has a very very small class right university of london cardiff and the london school of economics right these were this was his shortlist so just imagine whatever anyone i, I remember anyone had written uh, michigan state so i'm i'm not sure why you wrote that right so if your profile is similar to bharat's or if you have a low cgpa and that's why you're uh, aiming at a lower university this is the kind of shortlist that you can also get and we guarantee you an admit out of it it's not that i'm just giving you a top university shortlist we guarantee you an admit out of these top universities it's just because there are many people who are spreading the wrong information if you go to google also there are a lot of people that will be scaring the hell out of you but actual counseling and through uh, proper i am not saying anything fake right so there will be authentic profile announcement we will make you do internships we will make you do courses and at the end of the day you can apply to these top universities as well right no matter what is your cgpa no matter how uh, things have gone what kind of gap years you have obviously the bigger the gap year the bigger uh, bigger amount of hard work that you have to um, you know put in and we are here to help you out okay if you give us 6 months we can prepare a sanford profile because that has happened where one student had given us 6 months and we sent him to sanford it's right? 6 months he just did whatever we told him to do right so 6 months or one year with us will definitely get you into a top school obviously if you're targeting september 23 we don't have that much time to enhance your profile but at least you will get the shortlist that you deserve okay so moving moving forward this is how an lsc offer looks like so bharat uh, i didn't tell you that i was putting it up here so i just wanted it to show to everyone right so the lsc this is how an lsc offer letter looks like with that logo and i think this is what you guys are also dreaming of right so bharat how did it feel when you first saw this offer certificate because i'm sure i would have you know jumped across the hall where i saw the lsc name i wanted to i really couldn't though because when i received the mail i think it was 10:30 in the night because they i mean the time zone was different so like at 10:30 i was you know almost about to go to sleep i just checked my mail and then i saw that i had received an offer and from that point on i just ruined my sleep pattern because i got so excited i was not able to sleep like i was up till about 3 in the morning 4 in the morning because i just couldn't sleep as this uh super excited like it was really very heartening um unfortunately i did not allow my parents to sleep either <laughs> they started i told them so they got really like excited everyone in the house was excited so no one really slept that night um but yeah it it was it was really heartening because the uh, it was my first like option like lsc was so one that i was really aiming for out of all the universities that i applied to so uh, i mean there are still several universities that are yet to respond but to have your first like your top uh, choice respond mm-hmm. to you by early jan itself it makes it really easier because then you can start the process and just yeah it was very it was a very heartening wonderful process like to receive this offer letter exactly so matlab i remember on our table in our on our office everybody was elated as soon as your lsc came because we really wanted that for you right uh, you are a very humble person to be very honest uh, he was the university topper in ma but he was very concerned if he deserved the school or not and we were very confident though right because we have done this a lot of time we were very confident but his nervousness got to us also at some point of time whether we would get it or not 
but we were really relieved. SOS was a great outfit for us as well. And following that, when LSC came, we know we knew that you know they have recognized the potential that you have, right? So amazing, amazing work. Yeah, we are really proud of you, right? Uh, Pragyam, do you want to add anything to it? In fact, uh, our part of the story, Bharat, we were actually discussing about uh, your profile. I was doing that video by your track. Just in my, uh, I was discussing, I said, okay, he's rebating offers, right? Um, so, mm. you know, VJ is your career strategist, right? So he just mentioned that, no, he has an offer from SOS. And I was like, that's good. You know, it's a very small class size. And the next moment we realized, okay, there's a mail from the application team saying that uh, <laughs> there's an offer from LSE. And I think we jumped up. So we did your part. We did jumped up. We <laughs> just waited. Uh, but I think, um, firstly, you know, that's why we are here, right? We love to see these smiles, right? I think it just brings me back to, you know, my memory, you know, of me getting an offer and I can totally understand you might be, you know, why the sleep wasn't there, very clearly. <laughs> but uh, again, yeah, uh, you know, wishing you all the best for everything that is yet to come in terms of the other open networks. But seeing, you know, an admin from your uh, dream destination is, I think, what we all are working for. I'm really proud of you. Thank you. Right. Thank you so much. So, Pragya Ma'am herself had got an offer from University of Penn, that is an Ivy League in USA. So, I think you guys can relate to that, right? And moving on, LSE is very difficult. Obviously, just telling you a little bit about LSE's uh, communication and management, you know, course, the uh, acceptance percentage is less than 20%, right? Obviously, you get the London experience and the LSE, um, you know, alumni network so it's a very tough competition only limited seats right all over the world from people all over the world will be joining him and Bharat will be joining that and you know gracing that class from September 23 right so this that's almost to the end of the webinar guys right so you can check it check us out on LinkedIn you can check us um follow everyone every student of ours that is already in US UK or so so that you get to know what kind of work we are doing so these are two of our very, um, you know, dear admits, to be very honest, because one of them, Anmol, um, she was told by other counselor, I remember pretty vividly, that she was told from other counselors that she can't get any other university above the University of Cleveland State rank, right? So Cleveland State is around 150 or 200 rank. And she was, um, you know, rejected from many consultants that she can't get into it. But three months of her profile announcement, and then after that, you know, when we applied, the profile was not that bad. It was BTEC with 7.5. Again, it's a HUAG that you need a BTEC 9 to get into a top tier university. It's not true. Even with a 7.5, you are eligible. It just depends on what work we have done. She had three years of experience, right? Majorly into data field. Then the essays came and then a hard work came in the profile announcement. And right now she is sitting at Boston University, 10th rank for MS in business analytics with a whooping 20 lakh scholarship, right? So that is the main crux. When people said to her that she was not even eligible to go, she, is, she has backed that kind of a scholarship, right? And another one is that this was the guy I was telling you about, the School of Open Learning, Distance Learning person who is right now at Simon Venture Capital Fund, right? So Simon School guy, Venture Capital Fund, eh? so he is a part of that now. This is one of his LinkedIn posts that we are really proud of him. He was very much into investment, but uh, due to some family circumstances, he only could afford a open learning. And right now he is at one of the best venture capital funds, like university funded funds, right? So we are really proud of all of our students. Bharat is just one of them. And then there are mul multiple others, right? We are so proud of you, Bharat, right? And more or less, this can be you, right? These, uh, it just depends on the process, right? So no matter what kind of profile you have, just book a free counseling session, get your free evaluation done, right? We'll tell you your true potential. We love when we can cater into top admits. We don't have any partnerships to promote. So we just work for the students, right? And therefore, the you know, success rate is so high, right? So we have come to an end of the webinar and the giveaway. So you guys will receive the deadline document and the GMAT GRE waiver list universities all to your emails as soon as this webinar closes, right? So you guys will get directly on your email. It's the list of universities that are providing GMAT GRE waiver for September 23 and 2024. There is also a list of universities whose deadlines are still left in the round three, round four deadlines that you can still cater to. Okay, so this is just to motivate you if you have thought about studying abroad at any point of time. This is your you know call to drop in an application at least. Let's see where do you stand and then let's figure out things. Right? So, but start with your process, at least apply to these top schools. If you get an admit, your entire perspective towards you know your entire life and your career will be changed, right? So, any other things, uh, last words, anything uh, that you want to add, Pragya ma'am? 
I think uh, to everybody, aim high. I think that's the first thing. Uh, when even I do people, I want to aim for what, and everybody was, you know, amazed at the same time, kind of, you know, um, telling me that this is not possible. So I want to tell you guys that don't let anybody tell you it's not possible, right? Of course, there might be, you know, eligibility criteria, but having a good school is not that difficult as we imagine, right? Reach out to a person who can help you out. Uh, particularly for me, we wanted to build something that is very unbiased more than anything. It's true, it's genuine, right? So talk to, uh, you know, your student advisors here at ACE Methods and get, you know, you will get to know what you can do with your profile, right? If not, you know, you if you don't have a perfect profile right now, does not mean that you can't have a perfect profile or a good profile six months out line, right? Besides that, um, first of all, thank you, Bharat, for joining in. I think it was a pleasure having you here. And um, so proud of you because every student, I think, uh, you know, while yes, the counselors are very, very responsible for the success, but at the same time, I think the first person to make it possible is the student. If you didn't have that passion and, you know, eagerness to get into a school like LSE, you would have not got that, uh, you know, admit. So, first of all, congratulations. I'm really proud. Uh, for anybody, again, uh, you know, you can go through a website and read many more stories like, you know, we have discussed about today. Uh, but yes, wishing you all the luck. If you're aiming for September 23 intake, start very quickly. You guys don't have time. Right. Bharat, any last words that you want to share? Um, I, again, I just want to thank uh, all of you at Ace My Prep because, um, like, I feel like when I first... Uh, showed up uh, to meet all of you. I was a little underconfident. I think that just getting this offer letter itself has been uplifting. And it's um, good because sometimes you need to really, uh, like, again, the whole process of applying, uh, uh, like, for universities outside is very, like, nerve-wracking. And uh, for me, it's very stressful. I thought it was very stressful. But uh, the whole process, when you have guidance and when you have people to fall back on, I think that really is comforting, which I think you guys helped me out with a lot. So again, I just want to thank everyone for that because again, this wouldn't have been possible if it was if I didn't receive the support that I did. Um, and to every anyone else, I don't think that you should like who's here for this webinar. Don't feel ashamed or anything to ask for help. It's very natural because it's better to know what you're getting yourself into as opposed to just you know just diving in without much knowledge and figuring it out last minute so i think it's good to always seek out help and that's it i guess okay great i think uh, ma'am you mentioned that the zeal of uh bharat was very important to us yes but more than his i think his parents right so i i met his mother once then uh his father and mother both the second time and they were so intrigued to send you you know one of the top schools so uh the zeal of the parents also matters a lot so loop in your parents also if you guys have uh, your parents that have any doubts or so you can bring them on the one-on-one -on -one session that's completely fine we can understand it's their money that we are putting in here so we can totally understand if they have any doubts we'll cater to them as well right so guys you can see it on our website you can just check out our website this the entire process is live on there you can check out the uh, reviews and how our team works, right? Everything is live on our website. So you can see until your visa support and your pre-departure, that is sorting your accommodation, our services are till there. It's not just about counseling. It's also about the logistics. So your parents have to just sit, relax. We'll do your visa process, your loan, and until you get your accommodation sorted, we'll be there with you, right? So that's how Waste My Prep works. Counseling is 70% of it. Rest 30%, all your logistics will also be taken care of right so on that note um i have added a link right for a one-on-one -on -one session you can just register on that link and re uh, get a one-on-one -on -one session with one of our senior counselors and then you would actually get to know what your true potential is it does, it's not costing you any money it will just cost you time so if you can less 45 minutes of your you know um, busy schedule then you will get to know what is your true potential on the international stage right so on that note i'd like to end today's webinar i hope we were um, able to bring some quality information to your tables, right? Sitting in your homes. We did this on a Sunday so that you guys are relaxed and you can just listen us out for 45 minutes and one hour. And we are really grateful that you stuck out for one hour, 10 minutes, which is a huge amount of time in today's world, right? Uh, thank you, Bharat, for joining us, right? Again, hearty congratulations for the LSE admit. Um, we'll definitely invite you for another webinar when you are in London as well, okay? Sure. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Okay. okay.
Okay. So on that note, we are ending this webinar. Thanks for joining. Take care.